Hey guys, I'm Aishwarya and I'm Gaurav and welcome back to the Medicus. Since it is the Pride month, we attended some sessions of webinars and seminars regarding the LGBTQ AI plus community. And we got to know that there were many topics we were still unaware of and had many doubts. And I was completely surprised at the number of concepts I was totally unaware of. So we conducted some surveys to check whether are we, are we the only one who don't know about these concepts or there are many people like us. Surprisingly, we got to know that there were many people who were still unaware of this subject or were totally ignorant and against it. So we thought a little deeper. Why are these people totally against it or are ignorant towards this as it is a sensitive topic? And the reason that we found was lack of knowledge. People fear the things that they don't know about. So for this very reason, we wanted to make this video. We wanted to educate people about how common this topic is and there is a need to get people educated about this topic. Through this video, our intention is to learn together, educate ourselves and sensitize ourselves towards this very sensitive topic. So we reached out to an organization who were very kind enough to educate us and make us learn about this topic so that we all can learn together. In this video, we will be discussing these questions. So if you have doubt in a particular question, you can skip directly to that part of the video. Without wasting any time, let's jump right into the video. So today we have two very beautiful guests with us who will explain everything we want to know. So ma'am, I give the stage to you. Please introduce yourselves. Uh, hi, my name is Nishika. My pronouns are she, her and I'm a medical student studying in second year. Uh, hi, my name is Tishta. My pronouns are she, her and I just got done with my final year of MBBS in April of this year. And um, we wanted to let you know that uh, in June, which is Pride Month, we had 250 people sign up for our interactive sessions and uh, we sensitized them on uh, at the LGBT community and issues within healthcare related to the community. For someone who doesn't know anything about this, for someone who is completely a layman, can you please explain them what does LGBTQIA plus stand for? Uh, so please tell us who all are part of the LGBTQ plus community. So in the queer community, anybody who is not heterosexual or anybody whose gender identity does not align with the sex they were assigned at birth, all of them are a part of the queer community. Like it's, it's an umbrella term. You don't have to have a certain label to be a part of the queer community. Ma'am, uh, you said, uh, you mentioned sexuality and gender as different terms. So can you please explain what is the difference between sex and gender of a person? Is there any difference? Okay, so uh, gender identity, gender is a social construct. It is, gender identity is basically one's internal sense of being. A person can identify as any gender on the gender spectrum. And the gender spectrum is popularly considered to be like a linear spectrum with man and woman on the extreme ends and everything else in between. But that is not true. There are many genders beyond man and woman like or gender, gender queer, non-binary. So you can identify at any point on this spectrum. You can even move from one point to another. You can move to the left, right, even up and down the spectrum. So you can consider it like more like a gradient and not a linear scale. So that is what gender identity is. I want to reiterate that, um, you know, in we are going to oversimplify it a bit so that you can understand it if you've never heard of these terms before. So gender identity is how you perceive yourself. You know, it's your thoughts. It's in your mind. It's how you are seeing yourself, how you are perceiving your gender. So, for example, you have to think about it. So if I think about it, I perceive myself as a woman and hence I'm a woman. So that's what gender is. It's how you perceive yourself and for example I cannot look at you and tell your gender because I can't read your mind in the same way you cannot read my mind you don't know what's going on in my mind so that's why you can only know my gender if I tell it to you if I tell you that yes in my mind I'm a woman and hence my gender is that I'm a woman so for someone who might be confused about uh, these terms now you know what gender is and then we can talk about what sex is 
Uh, so sex is different from gender and when we talk about sex it's not what will go on in your mind it's not related to your thoughts uh, sex is more objective and uh, it might be something that you know medical students or doctors might be familiar with so sex um, is decided by your chromosomes or uh, your gonads your reproductive organs your external genitalia and your hormone levels so we i'm sure that we might have studied this so what we are familiar with is sex and like I said you know gender is something that uh, is in your mind it's how you perceive yourself whereas sex is something which is more objective so sex and gender are two different things and like I said uh, gender is a spectrum in a similar way sex too is a spectrum it's not binary it's not just male and female there are people who are born who don't match the biological characteristics that are typically perceived to be male or typically perceived to be female so we we use an umbrella term it's called intersex there are at least like 40 different types of intersex variations that have been recognized so sex too is a spectrum just like gender is uh, so here I'll tell you all about um, the term assigning sex. So for example, you know, we have this scene in our head, maybe from movies or medical students might know it from, you know, going to the labor room and uh, watching things uh, there. So you know that once the baby is born, the doctor will look at it or maybe in another setting, the parents might look at it, relatives or like a midwife will look at the baby and they look at the external genitalia and then uh, dis they will take a decision and it will be a split second decision that, okay, I see this genitalia, so this baby is a boy and um, I see this genitalia so this baby is a girl so what we're doing like this entire procedure it's called assigning sex so uh, typically you might know that someone can be assigned male at birth AMAB A-M-A-B assigned male at birth or someone can be assigned female at birth AFAB A-F-A-B uh, also, like Nishika said, there is something called as intersex. So what happens is that uh, sometimes the genitalia may be ambiguous and you may not be able to tell uh, the sex of the child as AMAB or AFAB. So in that case, the baby is intersex. It might be found out at birth or it may be found out at puberty. Sometimes it may not be found out at all. Uh, so what is intersex? It is basically when there are variations in these sex characteristics. So like Anishika spoke about gender not being a binary in, and it is a spectrum. In the same way, sex too is not a binary. There is a spectrum and you can be intersex. Ma'am, can you explain what do you mean by term binary and non-binary? Uh, okay, so traditionally in our heads, uh, when we think about gender, uh, we think man and woman, right? Maybe you might think like a girl and a boy, they can be say brother and sister or they can a man and a woman can be husband and wife. So we are used to seeing these type of structures, these kind of relationships and we're used to seeing the binary that is only two things. You can either be one of the two, but uh, that is not actually true. Uh, like we said that uh, you can be gender queer, you can be agender. So there are no two genders and obviously we can't read a person's mind. We don't know how they are perceiving themselves. So that's why you cannot look at a person and decide their gender for them. Ma'am, uh, while reading for these topics on the internet and uh, researching through some webinars and sessions, uh, we came across the term queer many times. So what exactly is a queer? Does queer stand for the entire community uh, community as a general or queer is a specific you know uh, a specific term for someone so uh, queer was initially this uh, word which means you know it can be it can mean weird or it can mean odd and initially it was used as a slur as an offensive term to describe someone who was part of the community uh, but now people from the community they have reclaimed this word uh, they no longer feel that is it is offensive and they are very proud and happy to use this word to describe themselves so anyone who is not cisgender who is not heterosexual sexual can use this term to ex uh, describe themselves and again it's an umbrella term so you know you don't uh, need to use a specific label like say lesbian or gay or bisexual you can just say queer so it is a, a generic term you know we can uh, if, if anyone is from the LGBTQ plus community we can uh, mm -hmm. say they are from the queer community right 
yeah it's it's respectful to say that they are from the queer community it's accurate to say that uh, but of course um, you know let people tell you what their labels are and uh, do not use a label for them that you might be assuming like let them tell you if they are comfortable doing that uh, ma'am while uh, answering uh, the uh, previous question you mentioned about cisgender so can you shed some more light on cisgender and transgender okay so a person who's assigned sex at birth aligns with their gender identity is a cisgender person and a person whose gender identity does not align with their sex at birth is a transgender person for example a person is assigned male at birth and they identify as a man so they become a cisgender man however if a person is assigned male at birth but they do, do not uh, do not identify as a man then they become transgender now they can identify as any gender on the gender spectrum if they identify as a woman they become a transgender woman if they identify as non binary they become transgender non binary uh, so going into this a little deeper uh one can say that you know uh, as i spoke about we are assigning sex to a baby right but when we assign that sex to a baby we also in a way assign gender to that child uh, we expect the child to behave in a certain way to wear certain clothes to play with certain toys uh, so for example i will give my example so that uh, it uh, you know people can understand it better i was assigned female at birth and uh, growing up there were certain expectations for me like uh, my parents would buy dog balls babies i would play with them i would be made to wear dresses made to wear pink uh, even growing up i choose to keep my hair long i um, you know choose to wear makeup choose to wear earrings jewelry so when i'm doing all of this i am in a way performing my gender right i uh, there are certain expectations from me from society that i have to act in a certain way dress in a certain way and all of these expectations are because i was assigned a certain sex at birth so when you're assigning that sex you are in a way also assigning gender so like i said i was assigned female at birth and i am very comfortable uh, performing femininity and also in my mind i do identify as a woman hence someone like me would be cisgender and if someone is not comfortable with uh, the gender that was assigned to them just because of the sex that was assigned to them at birth then they are transgender ma'am uh, when we ask you to introduce yourself you introduce yourself as i am nishika i am she slash her and you introduce yourself as i am trishta she and her so can you please explain me what is she her he his like what are these pronouns stand for so uh, pronouns are basically words that uh, you are going to use to refer to someone else or uh, maybe they might be in your presence so they might not be in your presence uh, for example um, my pronouns are she her so if you're talking about me later on you will say that we had her on our youtube channel you know for example so that's why you're using her for me and it's because i have told you my pronouns um then i can give the example of they them pronoun so uh, suppose i'm at a restaurant and someone has left their keys there so i'll look at the keys and i'll say oh someone has left their keys there right i won't say someone has left his or her keys there so in everyday life too we are already using they them theirs pronouns uh, without even being aware of it so uh, someone might be comfortable with the pronouns she her some people might be comfortable with he him some might be comfortable with they them there are also there's also something called neo pronouns we also want to make sure that you realize that pronouns do not equal gender so uh, someone uh, does not need to use the pronouns she her just because they are a cisgender woman they might want to use they them pronouns or they might be comfortable with she her and they them so then they might say their pronouns are she they so ma'am how will i know that what pronouns to use like if someone is passing by or someone is from the lgbtq community how will i know how should i refer to them 
okay so whenever you introduce yourself to anyone or uh, you can say hi like for example how i did i said hi my name is tishta and my pronouns are she her so you can do that or uh, if you don't know anyone's pronouns or if you know it's just a person passing by on the street or it's someone you're just seeing on the internet in some video in some post then you can just use they them pronouns for them um you should not be assuming their pronouns based on the clothes they wear or based on the length of their hair or their behavior you can just simply assume they them because as we know like it's the person who decides uh, their pronouns and it's the person who is actually experiencing their gender and you can't look at a person and uh, you know say that okay this is the gender the, uh, these are their pronouns and uh, it's best to always ask them and also if you happen to use the wrong pronouns sometimes just apologize correct yourself and move on just say i'm sorry and repeat what you said and say it in the using correct pronouns and move on don't make a big deal out of it because you will draw more attention to it and then maybe the person will not like it you know so as long as you say that you are sorry and you will you try harder next time you correct your mistake it's going to be okay Ma'am, can you please explain us more about what is sexual orientation and what what is its correspondence with the assigned sex and the identified sex of a person? So, sexual orientation is basically who you are attracted to. It may be sexual attraction, it may be romantic attraction. It does not depend on assigned sex at birth or gender identity. Although we use the labels depending on the gender of the person that they are attracted to, but for a person it is not related to it for example a cisgender woman may not necessarily be attracted to a cisgender man so a, if a cisgender woman or any woman for that matter is attracted to another woman then the person is termed as lesbian the sexual orientation is lesbian so the l in lgbt stands for lesbian gay is an umbrella term which can be used by anyone anyone who is not heterosexual basically so uh, a lesbian woman may use the term saying i am gay so um, there is actually no direct uh, correlation between your sexual orientation your gender identity and your sex they are three different like independent uh, entities so if you know someone's gender identity that does not mean that you know their sexual orientation you can't assume the sexual orientation just based on the gender identity so um there are certain terms and certain labels that are used so let's get to the first term and that's lesbian so if someone is a woman and is attracted to another woman or similar genders then they might be comfortable using the term lesbian so you can use the term lesbian uh, whether you're a cisgender woman or transgender woman and whether you're attracted to other cisgender women or transgender women and similarly someone can be a cisgender or transgender woman attracted to other women but they might not want to use lesbian they can use queer they can use gay like we spoke about already that queer is just an umbrella term gay is also an umbrella term so people might use different labels to describe themselves so i think we've spoken about um, you know lgbtqia we've spoken about the l for lesbian g for gay b for bisexual T transgender, Q is queer, I is intersex, and then we come to A. So what does A stand for? A stands for asexual. Um, so what is asexuality? Who is asexual? When someone does not experience sexual attraction to uh, other people, then they are asexual. Ma'am, is this because okay. of hormone imbalance or anything related with uh, biology? chromosomal defect or anything that they don't feel in a certain way you might get patients who come to you and you might be confused um are they asexual or not they might also be confused because not everyone has access to the internet or queer friends who can introduce them to these terms so if you do get a patient like this one they could definitely be asexual also other things that you might want to investigate is that are they experiencing a loss of libido are they uh, sexually repressed for example that do they feel a lot of guilt and shame around sexual acts it could be that so you can question them about that 
um, then it could also be sexual dysfunction. So for example, um, a lot of people can have sexual dysfunction maybe because they have a very stressful life, maybe there are relationship issues, uh, maybe there is performance anxiety. Also, when you have clinical depression, you can experience sexual dysfunction. A lot of medications do have a, their side effect is that you can experience sexual dysfunction. So you might want to rule all of these things out. And um, one of the other things could be that the person is asexual. And in this case, it's important to understand that asexuality is not a hormone imbalance. Um, a lot of people who are asexual, they have had their hormone levels tested and uh, it has been within the normal range. A lot of people who are asexual have also taken hormone therapy for other reasons and it has not changed their sexual orientation. They have still remained asexual. So it's not that their hormones, are, uh, their hormone levels are abnormal and it is also not related to their sexual organs, their reproductive organs. Uh, there's no defect as such. So ma'am, while reading for topics related to these, we came across a term known as ally. So can you please explain who is an ally and what does ally stand for? So an ally is any person who is cisgender, who is heterosexual and who supports the LGBT community. However, allyship is not just limited to supporting the LGBT community. You have to actively advocate for the community. It should reflect in your actions. There's a black American activist. The name is Rachel Cargill. They say that allyship, the formula for allyship is that knowledge plus empathy plus action. So action is very important. You have to be a person who is openly cure affirmative. You can't just be like, oh, in my head, I don't discriminate against anyone. I treat everyone equally. No, a queer person should be able to approach you without any dilemma, whether this person is going to harm me or not. You know, you can, as an ally, you can try to find allies within your college administration. You can talk to them about changing policies that may be discriminating. So like uh, Nishika says that, you know, uh, how do you be an ally? It's important to have knowledge. It's important to have empathy and action. So when it comes to knowledge, you can, of course, read up uh, articles on the Internet about it. Or uh, there are a lot of Instagram accounts nowadays that are very informative. So if you don't want to read a lot or you don't have the time to do that, you can refer to these Instagram posts. But it's really important to actively go out there and seek out this knowledge. Uh, then comes to empathy. So you might have the knowledge, but you might not be very kind. You might have some other... Um, biases in your head so even though you know the information you might still feel a little odd still feel a little uncomfortable so what i suggest to get over that um you know um and become comfortable with it uh, and actually understand it better is that there are a lot of youtube videos made by queer people a lot of queer people have given ted talks about their life experiences so when you actually listen to that you can empathize with them better so when you watch these videos, you can understand the struggles that they went through and you can also uh, understand how important it is to support them. So you can maybe work on your empathy in that way. And the last comes action. So I think uh, a situation that a lot of us are familiar with might be that we are just talking to friends and, you know, someone makes a joke that might be homophobic or transphobic. So at that point, it's really important to bring up this topic and uh, stop it at that moment. Because as I said, you do not, you cannot look at someone and tell that they are queer. So you might have queer people who are there and who are being made very uncomfortable by the situation. And they might not want to speak out because either they are also very hurt or they want to keep it a secret and they feel unsafe, you know, correcting people. So at that point, you as an ally, you can come in and actually say, OK, you know, this is wrong. Maybe we should talk about it and why it's wrong. So that can be one of the simplest steps that you take in the moment uh, when you can just confront a person about why it's wrong to make these homophobic and transphobic jokes. And that's something that we all experience, you know, in our college life, uh, in with our friend groups. So that's the simplest step to take. As an ally, how can I help someone who has recently come out to me? 
okay so it's really great if someone has come out to you that probably means that you have made them comfortable that they trust you so it's really important for you not to break their trust after they are telling you something like this so i would say that the first step is ne do not tell anyone else even if that person is your best friend and you share everything with your best friend you know still do not share this information with them or don't share it with your family members if they're trusting you and telling this to you then it's really important that you keep that secret and you do not out them to anyone else so queerness can also mean a lot of different things for different people like what i have personally seen is that people either make a huge deal out of it or i don't care about uh, what your gender identity or sexual orientation is but we should remember that for a lot of people coming out is a big act of trust and then it should be acknowledged as such you when you make a big happy thing out of it it actually erases the struggles that are associated with these identities you know being queer is joyful definitely but that joy does come with a lot of horrible experiences and it is important to empathize with those experiences too as you share the joy with them okay, so you can support them in you know their worst moments when they are facing discrimination you can offer to listen to them whenever they talk about their struggles empathize with them in that way and of course when they want to celebrate their queerness when they want to celebrate good moments you can be them for be there for them in that too firstly thank you so much for watching this video entirely and giving us your precious time We hope that you found this video informative. You got to learn many more new things, and I hope this video helped you to get sensitized a little bit towards this very sensitive topic. If you found this video informative and helpful, and you got to learn something new, please share this video with your friends and families. We will meet you in the next video. Until then, good luck. Take care. Namaste. Namaste.